Thank you for coming. Uh, so this talk is going to be about uh, cybersecurity with Apache Metron, um, okay. and specifically around uh, how we do that together with uh, uh, Apache Solar. So uh, the agenda for today's talk, it's, uh, we have pretty, uh, quite a lot of information uh, for you. Uh, so first of all, we want to do some int basic introductions. Uh, we want to talk about why uh, Apache Metron was created, uh, what it is, uh, how it looks like, who's using Apache Metron, what's the ecosystem that's forming around Metron uh, look like, and of course, at the uh, last bit, we want to uh, do a quick demo. Uh, so there's quite a lot of content, uh, so I would like to ask you to, if you have any questions, happy to, uh, uh, to answer them after the presentation. So to start off, my name is Ward Becker. I'm from, uh, from Amsterdam, and uh, I work for Hortonworks, which is a 100% open source company. Um, as a solution engineer for the European region. Um, besides that role, I'm also uh, an SME, subject matter expert for cybersecurity there. Uh, so I talk to a lot of uh, companies that are uh, investing in cybersecurity. And um, I'm also an Apache Metron contributor. So I, I had some uh, first commits added uh, to the project. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, so, and I'm presenting together with uh, Scott. Yes. So I'm Scott Cody. Uh, I work for LucidWorks as an engineer on the core team. So if you're using our Fusion product, you're using my baby. Um, I also founded a user group about three years ago called DFW Data Science. It's about 3,000 members, and it's dedicated towards fostering collaboration between businesses and individuals, for individuals to find each other, et cetera. It's a whole thing towards helping people build intellectual knowledge capital in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, if you're interested in what we do with DFW Data Science, you can follow uh, DFW Data Science on Twitter. We have a lot of Periscope uh, streams from speakers that come from all over the country. Uh, and it's, when it's a live feed, it's monitored, so if you have questions, you can ask. I also tweet quite a bit at Scott C. Cody. Okay, wonderful. So as this is a cybersecurity presentation, uh, we always need to have some scary slides, right? And that's actually quite easy to do with cybersecurity because uh, there's so many issues right now. Uh, for example, uh, who the hell knows this site? So I have been pounded. Uh, yeah, quite a few already. So uh, who, f who has actually looked up their, uh, their email address? Yeah, I, I did that too. So this is a site uh, by uh, a security researcher. He basically indexed all the data uh, that was exposed uh, through breaches, through data breaches, so shared on torrents or the dark web or whatever, what have you not. And it allows you to search whether you have been part of that uh, particular breach. And uh, I did that for my private email address and uh, I found out that actually my email, uh, email address and my personal data was exposed for seven companies. So that's huge. So I'm, I'm really personally affected uh, by these uh, breaches. Yeah, I checked for myself with my own email address, my one of many Gmail account, and I have been owned by two two things, and I haven't yet figured out how to respond to it. So, you know, maybe I need my own Metron. But, yeah. so. so let me see a show of hands of how many people in the room are uh, managers. Anybody in here uh, in analytics, security? Uh, how many developers are here? So these are all things that we're going to be talking about that we have to consider in addition to our development roles. Uh, as a developer, this is what got me so interested in Apache Metro. So anybody here uh, committers for Apache Metro? So we got contributor, of course. <laughs> anybody having Metron running in production? It's a, it is an open source project, so it's out there. Um, anybody testing in the lab? So, okay, uh, anybody heard of Apache Metron before this meeting? Okay, cool. Well, so now everybody else can raise their hands because you've now heard about Apache Metron. <laughs> so, so now you know what it is. It's a security uh, for anomaly detection. Yeah, you're in the right spot. So, so why do you use Apache Metron? There's a lot of security systems that are out there. Uh, they provide some form of capability, but uh, they're very lacking. Um, you know, it, typically, the security systems that are out there, 
they rely on you having some form of the data, but they don't provide a nice way for you to hold the data long term. So a breach occurs, and it could be three months before you actually find out that the breach occurred. And you won't, you generally don't find out, the industry, you don't find out that the breach occurred through yourself. You find out through a third party, which can be very embarrassing when it's a public thing that happens. So, you know, you got three months of missing data. Meanwhile, because time is, things are happening so fast, by the time you've researched to find out what the problem is, another breach has occurred. So here's some breaches that have happened in the past. Uh, police One's an organization for uh, checking out police activity. Uh, they had a breach that occurred. They found, they found out it because a researcher found it on the dark net. Uh, it was 28 months from when the breach occurred to when they were able to respond to the problem that occurred. Yahoo, they didn't have, they had 35 months that occurred before they had actionable intelligence to work on. They started trying to figure out what was happening. 35 months. And then a lot of people are familiar with Facebook Cambridge Analytica. Uh, it was 48 months that occurred from when Cambridge Analytica exploited Facebook to when we were able to respond. Facebook was able to respond and do something with the data to latch it down. Unfortunately, while they were latching it down, more exploits happened, as what happened last week or the week before. You know, so a big breach, congressional investigations, no thank you, I don't want that. Yeah, so what you see is that the, the amount of data that's being leaked, the intensity of the attacks, they are increasing. So what we saw in uh, the last uh, year was there were over 300 um, individual cases, so that we call a category one event, where uh, just single companies are involved. There were over 30 cases where uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies were involved. So one of the big examples is, for example, WannaCry. So there, there, there's a few companies that just couldn't get work, uh, work done for uh, another, a few weeks uh, until all the malware was removed from their systems. And uh, Ian Levy, which is the technical director of the UK National Cybersecurity Center, he predicts that in a few years' uh, time, there's bound to be a, a, a level one event, and that really requires uh, a national response. And if you look at some of the, uh, the most recent data breaches, uh, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of records involved in that. So for example, Exactis, which is uh, an aggregator uh, of, uh, okay, uh, of marketing information, um, they actually leaked uh, quite a lot of sensitive information uh, from uh, quite a few US uh, citizens. Um, very sensitive information. Stuff like my heritage, where you have, uh, have, for example, okay, who's your father, who's your mother, all that kind of information, maybe some, some genetic information in there. Uh, it's really sensitive data, especially, for example, when you want to verify if a user uh, is actually the user you're talking about. Yeah. Under Armour contains a lot of, uh, that was the My Fitness app, which actually contains a lot of health data from uh, people. So all the users and passwords and stuff were leaked from that, so a huge amount of data. So um, this is not uh, the end, this is just the beginning. We see it uh, only increasing uh, more and more nowadays. So there's a lot of things, a lot of, there's a lot of devices out there creating a lot of data, a lot of telemetry, uh, intrusion detection systems, um, application firewall systems databases, CRMs, these are all generating data. Your cell phone's generating data. The ring uh, on your door is generating data. We are drowning in data. It's a problem. And if you've, if you've got data that's coming in, as I mentioned earlier, the, the existing systems are keeping the data on hot for six months, you know, easily accessible, but you've got a good DevOps system, so you're backing up your data, it's hard to retrieve. Meanwhile, breaches are occurring. So you're drowning in it while you're getting swamped. Uh, you know, we have all these Internet of Devices, Internet of Things. Each one is a potential attack vector. There'll be 75 billion of these buggers out there by 2020. 75 billion different ways to intrude into your system. And they're all generating data. You know, incredible, incredible problem to have. So you got all this data coming in. Now how do you know what things to respond to? You got a lot of alarms. The existing security implementation systems, the SEAMs, uh, they, they provide some forms of managing the alarms and workflow, 
but they're not that great. Uh, Apache Metron is a effort to mitigate that problem with triage of problems. Yeah, what you're also yeah. seeing is those breaches, uh, which is actually uh, researched by Verizon. Uh, those breaches don't happen in uh, days or weeks or months. No, they actually happen on a minute, uh, second time scale. So it's really important for those existing systems or the systems uh, that you're going to use for cybersecurity that they be, are able to uh, create insights in a matter of minutes and not in uh, days or weeks because you're already behind. Uh, you're too late. So we now see uh, uh, why uh, there is a good reason for a system as Apache Metron to be. Uh, so let's talk about what is Apache Metron. So how does it tackle those problems that we mentioned before? So this is uh, what I always like to call a architecture slide. I know some of those small uh, letters, uh, words, you probably can't read, so I'll talk you through it. Uh, what you need to, to remember is that we start here and we're gonna end up here. And here uh, we have a 360 view of all the uh, stuff that happened around a certain event and we have full context and we have the best way to analyze uh, the specific security issue. So we start here on the left. So we start with uh, security telemetry information. And like Scott mentioned, there's an explosion of that. Uh, so of course we have the traditional data sources, so uh, your firewalls, intrusion detection systems, but we also have, for example, relational databases, uh, active directories, fusion uh, logs, solar logs, what have you not. Um, it doesn't really matter for Metron uh, what the source is. So it can be video, images, text, whatever, as long um, as it can be ingested. So we have a few ways to do that. Uh, one of the typical ways we do that is using uh, a tool called NiFi, which is also a fully open source project. And NiFi is, kind of, we call it a bit, the Swiss Army knife of data movement uh, and data ingestion uh, because it talks a lot of protocols and it allows you to basically hook up everything uh, that is out there, uh, get the data from it and move it towards a central repository where it's gonna be analyzed by Metron. Um, so, like I mentioned, it doesn't matter which ingestion tool you use, as long as it uh, ends up here in the telemetry event uh, buffer, in ingest buffer. So, this is a very fancy name for Kafka. So, whatever uh, you have, if it has a Kafka connector, uh, you can dump it in and uh, process it with Metron. And here, the really, the, the Metron piece starts. So this is the cybersecurity stream processing pipeline. So this is uh, ingesting those events in real time, parsing them, analyzing them, enriching them, and based on that, triaging them to uh, have some good uh, uh, insights in, okay, is this really an issue or not? So we start out with telemetry parsers. So we, what we do is, uh, because all the data comes in in uh, all kinds of different formats, we're gonna create a, a, a common JSON uh, object from it. So it's all going to be in JSON, which is quite flexible. Um, and um, uh, it just has a key value um, uh, structure. And what we're going to do is we're going to enrich it. And we're going to enrich it in three steps. And what we basically are doing is we're going to get all the information that we, get, that we know about a specific event and build up additional context. And we're going to add that to the event. And remember, we're going to do that per event in real time. So that means when a customer says, I have 10 million events per second uh, that I need to ingest, we're building up the 360 view for every event in real time. So that's, that's really why you need a big data solution, right? So the first step of enrichment is for example, um, uh, for example, I have an event and there's an IP address associated with it and it might be an internal uh, IP address. Can I find out, for example, in the HR database, is this, uh, a temporary, is this a contractor, is this uh, the CEO, um, all that kind of information. Um, is this uh, an important server or is just this a simple workstation sitting somewhere in the corner of the uh, office? These are all important things to know because it allows you to better prioritize the events later on. Uh, like Scott mentioned, we're drowning in data and we have a lot of alert fatigue. So there's a lot of alerts being generated uh, that are yeah, maybe not that useful. And we want to filter out that uh, noise as much as possible in Metron. Uh, the second enrichment step is the threat intelligence, which is actually another form of enrichment, where we uh, compare 
the information that we have with known threat intelligence feeds. So there's a lot of feeds available where you can, for example, say, hey, this IP address, is it known to serve, for example, malware? Uh, for example, it does this spread WannaCry. If yet, that's another signal that we can use for better uh, estimating whether this event is really a problem. And then we go to the third step of an enrichment, and that's the profiler. And I think that's really the secret sauce of Metron. So what we do there is we're not using, um, we're actually using uh, or looking at the event, not on a per event basis, but actually over time. So what we do here is uh, with a fancy term uh, they call a user and entity um, uh, behavior analytics, UEBA. Um, and uh, we do that in real time. So the uh, cool stuff that we can do, for example, is that we can compare uh, the individual behavior with the behavior of your colleagues, of the whole company, or compare to your past self. Eh? For example, uh, I typically work from nine to five, and now my account is logging into a server in the weekend. Is that typical behavior of, the, of that user? That's something we want to find out. But we want to do that, like I mentioned that, in high volume, real time, for 10 million events per second. Or even 100, if you want. So these three steps, they give a, uh, like a 360 view uh, of that event and over the behavior of that entity in time. And so we, when we come to the alert triage step, we actually really can estimate or with a high probability say whether it is something uh, worth exploring. If it is worth exploring, uh, we're gonna write it out. So there are multiple ways. Of course, we're gonna write out all the data into uh, uh, solar. Uh, and we use that typically for the store for 90 days of data. And we also store it in HDFS because uh, what you see a lot uh, around, uh, for a lot of data scientists, they really would like to have multiple years of data to build up reliable machine learning models, right? Because without data, you cannot buy, uh, so for just a few weeks of data, it doesn't say anything. For example, you have um, weekends, you have holidays, uh, those things really affect uh, uh, machine learning models. So that, that's really important to, to have. And I think also in the keynote is mentioned, have lots of data available for those folks. So uh, what we do is we uh, basically are very flexible in writing the data out to multiple uh, data services in the integration layers, as we like to call it. Again, a very fancy name for Kafka. So anything that can read from Kafka can also read from uh, the Metron feed. Uh, so we provide a few out of the box. Like I mentioned, the data vault, so we have HDFS. Uh, solar, we have visualization options. We can further improve the scoring uh, by uh, scoring those events against machine learning models. Uh, we have a data science workbench, uh, and we can also do some, some very advanced PCAP forensics on the data. So quite a lot of stuff uh, happening here um, in this Apache Metron architecture. Like I mentioned, solar is a very important piece of uh, Metron because it powers the real-time search. So typically what we do is the hot index layer, as we like to call it, so the last 90 days of data. Um, and we actually started out with Elastic. So that's, that's quite funny. So um, maybe if you read some old documentation, you would say, okay, then this Metron only supports uh, Elastic. Well, that's not longer true. We actually recently uh, made Solar the default. The reason is uh, uh, a lot of the community behind it, they really believe in a 100% 100, 100 open source solution. And with cybersecurity, uh, security is, of course, very important. And what you see with, uh, for example, Elastic, that a lot of those uh, components like XPack, and of course there are some changes uh, being recently being, being done there, but their solution uh, for protecting the uh, collections is not fully 100% open source. So, and with Solar, that is the case, because we can just uh, 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 protect it with, uh, with Ranger and Kerberos. So it was a really good fit for it. And uh, what you can see is we have an investigate UI, so that's a uh, Metron component. Uh, we also have third-party UIs. You can talk to Solar, of course, with Apache Zeppelin, because you have a simple SQL interface nowadays uh, via GDPC connection. And of course, you have all the full resolution data on HDFS. So um, uh, we actually see customers storing data up to seven years, for example. It's just a cost factor. Um, HDFS is one of the most cheapest forms of storage, so um, sky's the limit there. Um, yeah, and, and typically we see that uh, a lot of customers are using Hive to query that data from the HDFS uh, store. 
So, like I mentioned before, it's a 100% open source solution. It's top, uh, built on top of proven um, open source projects. The reason for that is that, uh, first of all, there's good documentation, there's a lot of best practices available, uh, there's a lot of developers that are familiar with these toolings, and of course, if you want to run it in production, and it is really a key mission critical system, which is typically the case with cybersecurity nowadays, uh, you have premium support available uh, from, per, uh, from commercial companies. So that's really important. Like I mentioned, profiling, the secret sauce of Apache Metron. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at those events, not on a per event basis, but actually looking at uh, how the behavior of an, uh, uh, an uh, entity, so that can be a user, can be a server, can be a self-driving car, um, in time. So if you look up here, uh, we have three events feeds, and every event feed has uh, a certain interesting events that we want to record. So as you can imagine, if you do that for a very big enterprise with 10 million events per, uh, per second coming in, that's a huge amount of data if you're recording all that behavior and tracking that per user. So we do that a little bit smart. So what we do is we divide up this uh, stream into uh, time segments, so that can be five minutes or one minute, depending on uh, the precision that you need. And uh, what we do is uh, for every time segment, we keep a data structure, which is an approximate data sketch. So it's a probabilistic data structure, and the good thing about it is that it doesn't matter how much events are occurring in a certain time segment, the size of storage of that uh, data structure is the same. So typically around a few uh, kilobytes, uh, depending on the precision that you choose, you, you can tune that as well. And the nice thing about those uh, data structures as well is that we actually can combine them so we can put them together. So if we record it for every five minutes, but I want to uh, compare my behavior with last week of last year, we can actually combine them into a combined baseline and do some statistical analysis on top of that. Under the hood, you don't need to think about it because that's really what Metron provides. It's kind of an abstraction that allows you to do that very easily uh, without a lot of uh, knowledge around Storm, HBES, and Kafka, but it is underneath. So if, if you're interested in that, you can definitely explore it but you don't have to. So some of the algorithms that we use, um, Hyperlight Plug Plus is for example one that's really about the cardinality. So for example, if we want to track the uh, distinct amount of servers a user connects to in a certain period of time, we use that. Bloom filters, uh, that's a very popular one. Needle and haystack solutions. So uh, for every user I can see, of can detect, for example, did this user actually visit this domain name before in the last year? That's something where a blue filter comes in handy. And we have much more. I'm not gonna talk to, uh, through them all uh, because of the time limitation, uh, but there's a lot of stuff there. And the good thing is, uh, because I, I get a lot of questions from, from, uh, from folks I'm talking to from, uh, from companies, and they say, yeah, we want to do machine learning. Yeah, yeah, okay. But 90% of the machine learning cases can be better solved and more performantly solved by these uh, algorithms. So, um, of course, there, there is a place, but I think it's, it's definitely 90% uh, of the cases are probably, you probably can, uh, don't do so deep learning, don't do, so do some advanced AI, you don't need it. You can actually have some basic statistical data structures and you're good to go. Uh, however, there is certainly a case for deep learning and, and machine learning, and we definitely provide you uh, with, uh, with uh, functionality with that in Metron, uh, but I, I would definitely recommend first looking at this part because uh, 10, million second, uh, 10 million events per second in real time is quite a lot of data to process. All right, so I want to give it to Scott and he's gonna talk to you about, okay, what does Apache Metron actually look like? Right. So everybody that's been in the industry for a long time, I'm sure has seen this before. This is log record, log data. And if you had to do analysis on someone that uh, penetrated, did a breach, you'd be taking this log data, uh, you might write a Perl script or a Python script, scrape it together, throw it into Excel spreadsheet, you know, back in the day, and you're trying to figure out what the heck happened. But we don't want to do that anymore. Uh, there's a lot of systems out there that make it easy to do, but they're closed and you don't have the ability to extend them or enhance them on your own, uh, or you have to get really expensive specialized training for it. So Apache Metron provides a nice modern UI for dealing with it as opposed to the old green screen. Uh, you can see things like, uh, you know, you got scores, you got 
timestamps, you got the traceability of why things happen, but we'll go through all that. So here you can see the score. The score, what that represents is what's the likelihood that this particular logged item event is relevant and requires attention. Uh, in this particular section, this little column, you're seeing the reason. What, you know, this is the traceability. So why is it, why did you get the score that you got? Uh, you know, it, many, when you're looking at logs, you, you don't have that. You have to infer that on your own. Here, we're, we're providing that for you. Um, who is using Apache Metron? That's more yeah. towards. Yeah, I'll talk to that. Yeah, uh, yeah and with the last bit, uh, so, so for example, if you talk about AI uh, and that kind of stuff, you, uh, the traceability the, or the explanation why this is a, is a problem is usually uh, difficult. Eh? It's, it's difficult to inspect uh, the reasons why a machine learning model scores something. So that's why together with the statistics, together with uh, the triaging rules that we provide, it really allows you to help your security uh, operations center analysts uh, to, to really understand what is happening and not be a black box. So that's, that's I think, really important. Uh, so who is using Apache Metron? Um, there's quite a few uh, 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 people that are uh, companies that are currently using Apache Metron production. Um, of course, it's cybersecurity, so some are a little bit more verbal around it uh, than others. Um, the, the most verbal ones are uh, managed security pr service providers. So, for example, we have in Australia, we have uh, Telstra, uh, which is, uh, has their uh, newest uh, security operations center completely based on Metron. Uh, QSight is actually a company I work with uh, frequently. Uh, they were acquired by KPN because of their advanced uh, uh, cybersecurity analytic uh, capabilities, which are actually provided by Metron. Uh, there's uh, financial institutions, for example, Capital One. Um, if you Google Capital One and you project Purple, you will find out uh, some details around how they use Apache Metron uh, for their use cases. And of course, other industries uh, are also um, heavily invested in Metron. There's some defense ministries and country-wide government initiatives, uh, as you w might expect. And of course, I cannot talk about it. I do know a few, but uh, yeah, that's uh, hush hush. Um, that's the matter, the, yeah, how, how the games play there. Um, there's also, because it's an open source project, you see a lot of interest from partners that actually want to build uh, added value on top of uh, uh, an open source core. So what you see is we see companies like Zoom Data building up visualizations on top of uh, Apache Metron. And for example, Zoom Data really uh, uh, looks, for example, uses Solar, but also you can use Spark, for example, to fire off some uh, real-time analytics. We have some folks building infrastructure and also some folks providing uh, out-of-the-box uh, typical uh, compliance reporting uh, that companies need to do when they are, they're serious about cybersecurity. Okay, so for the last five minutes, I want to quickly gi give you a, a very uh, uh, quick demo around Apache Metron so you have a little bit of feeling how it looks like. Uh, of course, it's a simplified one uh, because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to share something uh, that you could actually see. So and I want to key in one other item about the ecosystem about Apache Metron. Apache Metron is a give from Cisco. So it is initially mm. started off as a Cisco project, and it's been expanded upon by partners such as Hortonworks and uh, the other people, the other companies you saw in the uh, community. So it has its real heritage and security operations center. The demo we're going to talk about uh, is. We have, we have a, a capability in the Fusion application system to store blobs. They, uh, they hold JDBC drivers, models, et cetera. Uh, what if someone was to upload a binary that had uh, bad stuff in it? So we're going to demonstrate uploading a blob that has bad stuff in it. Uh, we're going to get the logs coming from uh, our variety of internal systems. And they're going to get ingested. So these are the telemetry data getting ingested into uh, um, into Apache Metron, and then you're going to see Apache Metron do its job. Okay, great, thank you. Yes, yeah. um, I wanted to do that live, but uh, being mindful of the time and also being mindful of the network connection that we have, I, I'm not sure if your network connection is as good as mine, but uh, I've uh, recorded the video, so let's go through that. Okay, so we start out, uh, of course, with, uh, uh, with Fusion. So let me log in. I've created an application in Fusion. Um, 
And like uh, Scott was mentioning, it uh, has a blob store where we can upload blobs to. Uh, you can do that through the API, but uh, we're now doing that through the UI. So what we're gonna upload is uh, two files. One is not malware, as you can see, that's not malware, right? Yeah, okay, great. So we're gonna upload that. There we go. And, uh, okay, we need to create a path, so let's put it on activate, and we're gonna upload that. So when we're uploading it, there's an event being generated in the logs, we're gonna ingest that. Okay, and we're gonna upload uh, also the second model, the second blob, the binary blob, there we go. This blob contains malware. Oh wait, I, I want to show you how it looks like. That's definitely malware, right? Yeah, okay, great. So uh, let's select that one, upload that. Okay, great. And now also this one is written to the logs and what we do with NiFi, we actually are tailing the logs on the, in this case on the Fusion server. Uh, there is some functionality, for example, for log shipper uh, that ships, I, I believe, with uh, either Solo or Fusion. So you can also use that uh, in this case, uh, because it's a little bit more visual. I'm using uh, NiFi 5 for it. Um, so the data comes in into uh, these uh, processors, and uh, what you see is uh, kind of a data flow. So it, the data flows through this, um, uh, this data flow. It, it detects, okay, does that event have a specific blob ID? Uh, yes, if so, we're gonna retrieve the MD5 hash from Solar. So of course we can do that also in Metron, but uh, in this case uh, for the demo, I wanted to do that in NiFi. So we're getting that MD5 hash, we're adding that to the event, so we're already doing some enrichment here, and then we're sending it over to another NiFi cluster, and that's the NiFi cluster that is running next to Metron. And that one is then dumping that information in, into Kafka. Okay, so, Metron does a thing, does analyze it, and what it does, it actually compares uh, those events, uh, uh, compares them uh, on uh, the MD5 hash. So is this a known signature? So we have a database of bad signatures. So for example, here you see uh, the blob MD5 and there's no score around it. So these are the ones that ac actually don't contain any malware. However, so uh, we can inspect it, so we can click on it. And then you see all the context around it. So if you're a security analyst, you use this workbench uh, to work with it. But I, we see one with 100. It's gonna, uh, it's automatically tagged as WannaCry malware. It's the loader and worm components. Uh-oh, uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, bad news. So that's why we scored it 100. And because it's bad news, we want to do something with it. So what you usually see that there's a case management system attached to, uh, to Metron, so ServiceNow or Jira or what, what have you not. And what you can do is uh, we actually uh, create an issue uh, in Metron and that is automatically communicated to those types of systems. So for example, we want to uh, uh, notify my colleague <coughs> that uh, he needs to take, uh, he or she needs to take a look at this event because it uh, contains malware. So we might want to clean up the workstation um, uh, because uh, yeah, that's not good to, to have. Uh, what you do see is that in, if you are very confident and you have a very high probability, a lot of this stuff is actually gonna be automatic. You're not gonna do uh, this as a manual step. So we actually have companies that are uh, automatically wiping systems if there's a certain threshold met. Of course, that's not gonna be the CEO uh, computer, right? Because then uh, you're gonna have a nice conversation. And that's why the enrichment is so important because, because we already know it's the CEO, so we're not gonna wipe that machine automatically. Uh, we're gonna send somebody over and ask very nicely to, uh, uh, to do some file removal. Okay, that was the demo. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you got a, a nice impression uh, around Apache Metron. Uh, love to stay for uh, some further questions. And uh, I also have stickers. So if you, uh, your laptop is uh, desperately needing some, uh, some extra swag, uh, happy to provide that. Okay, thank you very much. Great. All right. Uh, questions?
from? Stark? Snort. Snort. Oh, snort. Oh, snort. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, 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 I didn't hear, I hear you correct. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so for most of the typical uh, security telemetry data sources, we actually have uh, parsers and, uh, st well, standard ingest uh, architectures uh, for that. So, for example, syslog, uh, that's also one that's quite common. Um, uh, we have we have typical patterns how you would ingest that, and uh, of course we have the the parsers already available. So, the parsers you can either use existing grok statements that we typically see uh, being available. Uh, for example, folks that are familiar with Logstash. Um, but you can also r uh, use uh, regular expressions or uh, uh, something that runs on the VM, basically. Okay. So, Snort, as you got a, a lot of times, the rule provider mm -hmm. provides the severity. Yeah. So emerging threats or something. They'll provide, or I mean, they'll provide like the severity. How is the severity reconciled in Metron if the, if the rule? Itself yeah, that, that's a very good one, and actually that's something uh, we see a lot. The, uh, the advantage is that we can actually take that into account. So what you typically see when there's something occurring, it occurs multiple times. So traditional scene devices would just put one on one, okay, this is an alert, this is an alert, and you would end up with like a bucket of alerts that are actually very related to one single event. So what we actually do, and uh, for example, QSight is uh, one of the companies that are doing, they are doing some aggregation in the Metron uh, processing pipeline so that we only push one alert out instead of uh, 1,000 alerts. Which, so we do some aggregations as, uh, based on uh, the combined severity of those uh, events as detected. Yeah, that's a, good, a very good point, yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. There, there are, for example, uh, s some AI systems on the market that I'm aware of that, uh, for example, detect automatically um, um, some of the context uh, around it. Uh, in this case, you need to indeed have a little bit more domain knowledge to tweak it further. Um, the, the advantage is, is that uh, it explains a bit better. So because that's uh, actually one of the, the issues with some of those uh, AI systems. Uh, they come up with all kinds of alerts, but it's really hard for the security operation folks to determine why this is an alert. So uh, again, it's, uh, it's a little bit more uh, manual work there and domain knowledge, but it provides much more value, I think. Very, very good question. Yeah, thank you. So, so uh, yeah. Since Solar powers the search on Metron, and since Metron is open source, Yeah. Is it possible, just asking for a friend, is it possible, is it possible to deploy Metron with a fusion server running as a certain application? Uh, actually, yeah, we were we were actually uh, uh, yeah. in preparation of this talk. We we're actually working on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, there's no reason why that couldn't be the, the case. Yeah, I, I just think there's some benefits. I mean, there's some some nice to have that Fusion has that will enhance Metro. Uh, exactly. So yeah. what we're actually looking for is, for example, uh, we can't get enough visualization rights and insights. Right. So, uh, and I think uh, Fusion can play a, a good role with that. So, so we're actually trying to hook up uh, Fusion. So we, uh, in the progression of the talk, we run into some version compatibility issues. Uh, but that's something that's, that's definitely solvable. And I, I, I definitely look forward to, to having an integration with Fusion there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So I saw a question here. Uh, Yeah, exactly. So, so the other question of the, the way I would summarize it is, okay, you can collect all the data, but which data is actually valuable? And when do you know when what the data to keep and what to throw away? 
uh, that's a conversation uh, that we have with a lot of companies and it's really hard to determine. And I think it's, it's really something, uh, it's also a cost-benefit uh, conversation because you can of course retain all the information that you want, uh, but there's a cost associated around it. So I think there's, a, look, like with all things, you need to strike a balance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and where the balance lies, uh, I, def I definitely think because we have HDFS and solar, uh, which are uh, very good, uh, good systems that allow you to keep a lot of data, uh, but that might be not be enough, or it might, uh, might be still to be costly, and then we have some other ways to filter the data. So, for example, uh, uh, for example, uh, people were to search cat data, snort data. There, there, there are some data feeds that provide a lot of uh, data, but maybe not a lot of value. Uh, so you can throw that out for, uh, further. We also have a way to better optimize the storage in HDFS, uh, which is called erasure, story, erasure uh, coding, which allows you to store more data on HDFS efficiently. So th these are the discussions that we typically have around that topic. So good, good point. All right. Um, for, for the folks that want to, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, going to be sticking around here. So if you have more questions, come over. Also come over for stickers and enjoy your lunch. Uh, OK, thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you.